I am surrounded by fragrances. Well, I always am, I guess. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today, we've got a huge undertaking. The top 50 fragrances to buy. You're wanting an amazing collection and you're a true beginner. In this video, we're keeping it at designer fragrances. So no niche ones here, but I may tackle that in the future. There's a lot to talk about though. Let's just jump into it. Obviously, since I have so many fragrances to go over here, I'm not gonna spend much time on each one of these because even 30 seconds per fragrance would make this video almost 30 minutes long, so let's just do it. First up, Bleu de Chanel from Chanel, of course. This one I think you have to own if you're a beginner. This thing is ultra versatile. You can wear it literally anywhere, any season, daytime or nighttime. It's super people-pleasing, mass appealing. There's a reason this is one of the best-selling fragrances on the market to date. And and with Bleu de Chanel, this is the Eau de Toilette, but most people seem to gravitate toward the Eau de Parfum. So one or the other of those two, EDT or EDP. Next up, Dior Sauvage, another super obvious one. This is the Eau de Toilette. And unlike Bleu de Chanel, most people seem to gravitate toward the EDT tea here, not the Eau de Parfum. Dior Sauvage has a big ambroxan note in it, gives it kind of a metallic feel off the top, along with bergamot, Sichuan pepper, black pepper. This thing also, like Bleu de Chanel, a massive compliment puller. The performance a little bit bigger on this one than Bleu de Chanel. Some people like that, some people don't. It can be a little more aggressive, a little more in your face, so you may need to dial this one down a little bit depending on where you're going and what you're doing. Oh man, I'm going to talk so much I just fall over. Ugh. This next one, not as obvious. This is more personal choice. Intenso from Dolce & Gabbana. Now this is really similar to Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme, but I think that this is better than Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme. This one is gonna be a little bit more of a mature fragrance, a little bit classier. It's got a tobacco note in here along with lavender. This thing is very versatile. It is not as uh, loud as you would expect with the name Intenso though. And this one does get overlooked a lot. So this one could be a great fragrance for somebody who's, you know, maybe a little bit older, middle-aged and up, or somebody just looking for a classy type of scent. Next up, a date night staple. Dolce & Gabbana is the one Eau de Parfum. This one is one of the best designer fragrances specifically for uh, evenings out or like I said, date night situations, period. I think that this is better overall than the Eau de Toilette. It's a little bit richer. It has a little more density, a little bit more depth and slightly better performance. So this one's gonna be really sweet, warm, spicy and sexy. Keeping it with Dolce & Gabbana, light blue, oh intense. Of all the light blues, I think this one is the most versatile and that's why I go with this one over Light Blue Forever, which I personally like a little bit more. This one's a really great sea salty aquatic type of scent, fantastic for spring and summer. Now we're on to Versace, and I'm not doing it house by house necessarily, just however <laughs> I have it right here to pick up, so keep that in mind. Eros, and this one's the Eau de Toilette. This is the best-selling fragrance from Versace as of this video. Really sweet, it's got mint, it has vanilla, uh, it can be a little bit loud and a lot of people love it for the performance. So again, that kind of loudness, keep that in mind when you wear this one. Fantastic evening out fragrance if you're looking for attention and also can be office safe as well. Just don't spray it on as much. Versace Pour Homme is my next choice. This one from Discounters, not very expensive and it's going to give you a similar feel to Chanel Allure Homme Sport. So it's pretty close to that fragrance, but a lot more affordable. This one is a little bit fresher than Allure Homme Sport. Allure Home Sport has a little bit of a, a creamy nature to it, a creamy sweetness, whereas this one is more just a straight up casual, office friendly, spring, summertime scent. Really nice stuff. And then one more Versace for good measure, Oud Noir. This one is a personal favorite of mine. So that's why it makes the list. But I feel like you need at least, you know, one or two Oud fragrances in there to kind of dip your toes in the water. And this is a really good one to start off with. This one has a nice amount of sweetness to it and also spice. You've got saffron in here pepper. You have kind of a dark, mysterious, woodsy vibe to it. Really easy to wear stuff. Some people compare it to Tom Ford's Oud Wood. When you first spray it on, maybe it's going to remind you of that, but they do go their own ways 
as they dry down. Oud Noir though, great scent, perfect for fall and winter. Next up, Dior Fahrenheit Le Parfum. Now of all the Fahrenheit's, I think this one is the best one if you're just getting into fragrances. This is not a list of, you know, best classic masterpiece designer fragrances. Otherwise, it would be the Eau de Toilette, the original. So this one has a bit of that petrol vibe, that gasoline smelling vibe from the original Fahrenheit, but it's toned down heavily here. You've also got booziness, you've got sweetness. It's very classy, great richness, great longevity and projection, fantastic scent. It's pricey, but it's worth it. Next up, Dior Homme 2020. This one got a bit of hate when it first came out, but uh, a lot of people have come around on it, myself included. This thing is a very uh, wearable, versatile, mass appealing, compliment pulling, uh, modern men's fresh woodsy scent uh, with a little bit of a, a spicy undertone. It's got a bit of fuzziness and warmth to it, makes heavy use of uh, modern aroma chemicals like cashmere and iso -E super, Dior Homme 2020. Then of course, Dior Homme Intense, this one a must own fantastic. This thing is amazing. <laughs> it really is. It's got ambrette. It has iris. Uh, it's got a bit of pear in there, some cedar. This is one of the fragrances that popularized or helped popularize iris being used in a makeup-y or creamy sort of fashion. And it still smells absolutely amazing. Formal type of scent for cool weather. Uh, go through a couple Tom Fords here. Noir Extreme. This thing makes a use of kulfi as a note. So it's this pistachio sort of ice cream sweet uh, note, fantasy note that's used in the fragrance. Very unique, especially compared to all other designers out there. Uh, it is a Tom Ford though, so it's going to be pricey once again. And then Tom Ford Black Orchid. This thing is a classic. It is marketed as a women's fragrance, but lots of guys rock this one as well. It's going to give you this sweet, floral, uh, dark, slightly earthy scent profile. Big punch here. Lots of power in it. Fantastic scent. Next up, Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. A lot of people do prefer this fragrance over Allure Homme Sport. Going to get a good amount of Tonka in here. Big time compliment pulling fragrance with great versatility because that one you can pull off nearly year round. Just dial your sprays up or down as needed. Then we've got Spice Bomb Extreme from Victor and Rolf. So if I was going to go with any Victor and Rolf fragrance, it would be this one. I think that it's better than the original Spice Bomb. I think that the fragrances that have come afterward, Night Vision, EDT, and EDP, and Infrared, while they're fine for what they're trying to do, the fragrance that really captures the essence of what a lot of people think Spice Bomb is, is this one. So this, of course, is going to have a ton of spices, good amount of sweetness in there as well from some black vanilla, which really helps smooth things out. A monstrous performer. It is a great fragrance. And it's another one that unfortunately you can't really find all that cheap. Now, a personal favorite, Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme, which uh, nowadays I believe is just called Gucci Pour Homme, which is good because at some discounters, and I've said this before, this fragrance will say Gucci by Gucci by Gucci Pour Homme, which is just stupid. So this is a very, very pleasant smelling tobacco fragrance, a bit of cypress in here. So you have this kind of green woodsy nuance, uh, bits of fresh spice and sweetness. The only thing about this that's kind of a bummer is the performance is not fantastic, uh, but the fragrance smells so darn good that I think everybody should scoop this up. And it really does stand out compared to what most other Gucci fragrances are nowadays. And this next one, YSL Y Eau de Parfum, completes the, the trifecta of the big time blue fragrances on the market nowadays. So that's Blue de Chanel, Dior Sauvage, and this one. Y Eau de Parfum is going to be the most versatile, most compliment pulling of the Y line. So if that's what you're after, which you probably are if you're looking for blue fragrances, this is the one to get. This one does take a little bit of a different tact as compared to Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel. So you have apple that's going to be very prominent in the opening here. There's also a bit of citrus, but not as much as you're going to find in Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel. And this one also makes use of sage as it dries down and doesn't really have a bit of a smoky nuance like Bleu de Chanel and doesn't have an overload of Ambroxan like Dior Sauvage. Then we've got M7 Oud Absolu, also from YSL. This one's going to be a little bit harder to find than some of the other fragrances here. And this one is basically a re-release of a classic YSL fragrance, which is, of course, M7, which is or was one of the first prominent oud fragrances released by a designer house. So with this, you're going to get a little bit of resinous sweetness. The oud in here is not animalic or funky. It's pretty easy to pull off. It does have a little bit of a throwback feel as compared to something like Versace Oud Noir, but it still smells amazing. And something like this is going to let you dip your toes into some fragrances that came before. Then we've got a new one, which is Lanoide Loam Blue Electrique. So this one 
takes the Lanoidolome DNA, modernizes it. I might have even put in the original Lanoidolome, but I feel like this one does what that fragrance does, but better. Yeah. It smells fantastic. It's got that cardamom right off the top. Very sexy, spicy, sweet, but here made a little bit fresher and given a little bit of a blue twist, hence the name. This thing smells fantastic. For me, it's worth full retail easily. And since this stuff smells so good, I mean, we know that Yves Saint Laurent is going to discontinue it, right? It's going to happen. I'm just messing with you guys. Like, I'm not saying it's discontinued. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me just because that seems to be how things go. Let's do a couple Pradas uh, for the Lunarosa line, Black. That's what I'm going with. This one is my favorite of the line. Now you should also probably check out Lunarosa Ocean and Carbon as well. Carbon smells a bit like Dior Sauvage. Lunarosa Ocean smells like maybe a few different blue fragrances put together, but Lunarosa Black stands out compared to everything else on the market nowadays. It does smell very unique compared to everything else that's on this table right now, and it's surprisingly extremely versatile. If, you, if you're not familiar with that scent profile, you know, you might smell it and go, I don't know, but trust me, it works and it crushes. And then the other Prada is gonna be Loam, and this is the easy to find of the line because Prada is apparently just killing the line off. I don't know, Loam Intense discontinued, Loam Low getting harder to find. It's, it's rough, it's hard out here for a G. So this one is gonna use Iris in a different way than some of the other fragrances here. The Iris in here is more powdery, more soapy, very clean, very fresh. This is an amazing office fragrance, great daytime scent, very versatile. Then we have my favorite from the code line, Code Absolute. This thing has an amazing opening. It's got this sparkle, this effervescence, this sweetness that just kind of bubbles off your skin. That doesn't sound great. <laughs> it smells really nice though. This effervescent opening leads into uh, richer, warmer base notes. That thing will work about anywhere in fall and winter time. Absolutely a stunning fragrance. And then we've got to have an Aqua de Jo. So I've got Profundo Lights right here. This is the newest of the Aqua de Jo line, but frankly, could be any. You could go with the original or maybe Profumo works better for you. Maybe Profundo works better for you. Heck, maybe Absolute works better for you, but you need to have an Aqua de Jo. So this, like I said, is the newest one. So I'll, I'll include this here, but Aqua de Jo. Just pick whichever one you want. Up next, I got another Oud fragrance, Boss Bottled Oud. Now, with the Boss Bottled line, I probably would have included Bottled Intense, but that one has been discontinued. It's a lot harder to find, so my choice would be this one. It has that Boss Bottled DNA, that apple and cinnamon, but here it's combined with very wearable Oud. Again, kind of helping you test out and try out Oud fragrances to see if they work for you. Then we've got the scent Private Accord. This one makes use of Meninka fruit, which the entire the scent line uses, kind of an exotic, dusty, fruity, sweet note. And here you're also going to find chocolate and coffee, which I think works perfectly with that Meninka. Up next, a cheap one, Hugo Reversed. Now the reason this is in the list is because it's cheap. If this thing were more expensive, it wouldn't be here. So make sure you pick this up from discounters if you do pick it up and don't pay all that much for it. Now this one is very easy to wear, kind of casual gym sports scent for spring and summer daytime use. It's not anything that's gonna set the world on fire, but it is a great fragrance just for kind of a dumb reach situation. And again, doesn't cost that much. And we have from Isi Miyake, Lo DC. A classic fragrance makes use of yuzu, which is a citrus note that I myself am very fond of. One thing with Isi Miyake, they have some fantastic cool weather fragrances. So do look into the house, check out some of their cooler weather scents. But I think if we're just gonna grab one, this is the one you have to grab. This is the one that kicked the house off for a lot of people. We've got a lot of summertime scents through these ones, some fresher ones. And this is one of those, Jimmy Choo Man Ice. From the Jimmy Choo house, this would be the one that I pick. Doesn't cost all that much. The atomizer here is very nice. The presentation pretty good as well. And this one is gonna give you an approximation of Dior Homme Cologne. It's similar to that scent. So it's gonna give you this kind of iced lemonade scent profile that smells really nice. Performance, not great but because it doesn't cost that much, it doesn't matter. Then we have Invictus Aqua. Now I'm not a big fan of the Invictus line, but I feel like you need 
to smell it. You need to become familiar with it because there's so many fragrances out there that borrow from the Invictus playbook. You need to know when you smell something, oh, this smells a bit like Invictus. And Invictus Aqua would be my choice to get people kicked off on this line. It does have that bubblegummy sweetness that the, the line is known for, but it's a little bit fresher here, a little bit easier to stomach if maybe it's not your type of scent you would typically wear. And also, of course, the versatility is through the roof on this thing. Now, this is the uh, re-released version. The original is more difficult to find, much more expensive. And if you're just getting into things, I wouldn't worry about that. Just get the bottle that they have available, basically. Then from Paco Rabanne, also 1 million lucky. Now, this doesn't really smell like 1 million, the original fragrance, but it does have a very interesting makeup, this scent. It combines notes that are fresh with notes that are typically used in more uh, heavy and warm styles of fragrances. So it's this kind of melding, this meeting of worlds, and it works really well. So you have these kind of ozonic notes mixing with uh, nutty notes, and it just works. One Million Lucky is a, a great scent. Now time for a classy, fresh, clean, woodsy scent, Bulgari Man wood neroli. Neroli is a note that I love, white floral that gives kind of a citric nuance to fragrances, very clean, and it being mixed together with the fresh woods in the base of this one make for an amazing springtime scent. And uh, really it's got more versatility than just being springtime, but that's when I think of it. And then of course, Azaro Wanted by Night. I've talked about this a lot and a lot of other people have talked about this a lot. So you're possibly sick of hearing about it, but for the price, Wanted by Night is a stunning fragrance. This thing at discounters you can often find in the $30 range, $35 range, and it's worth double that. It's got fruits, it's got spices, it, it lasts for a long time, it smells unique amongst other designer fragrances, and it is worth every penny. Then we're gonna go with two Varvados fragrances. This is not one entry, it's, it's two, but Varvados Vintage and Varvados Artisan Pure. So this one kind of has you covered for fall and winter, and this one has you covered for spring and summer. These are my two favorites from the house. Varvados Vintage makes use of rhubarb, which I love, doesn't get used enough. It's also got suede in here, tobacco, uh, a lot of spices. This smells just amazing. For the price, uh, it is one of the best buys that you will ever find. It's just the performance lets it down a little bit, but not enough to, to really you know, ruin the party. Then Artisan Pure has a, a lot of citrus in there, like Clementine, for example, which again, you don't see used all that often. And it also has a little bit of a, a white floral feel to it, even though I don't think white florals are officially a note in the fragrance. Then it has this clean, uh, modern masculine dry down. Artisan Pure is a head turner and uh, a fantastic fragrance. And then we're gonna go on to a couple of fragrances from Givenchy. So we'll just do the same thing, I guess. Similar idea, Gentleman Cologne. So this is spring and summer, Gentleman Eau de Parfum, fall and winter. These both make use of iris, but in kind of different ways. This one is a little bit more in tune with Diorum Intense from before. So it's that creamy sort of iris, sweet and rich, full of depth. Whereas the iris in Gentleman Cologne is fresher, almost like the, the iris has been sprayed, you know, by a mister or something in a florist shop. This one, more of an aquatic feel, very fresh. This one, richer, warmer, sweeter, but still both of them super classy. Then we have one of the most hyped cheapies of all time, Encre Noir from Lalique. You have to have this. Now, this makes use of vetiver and the way that it's used is dark. It's a little bit rooty, you know, slightly earthy, touch of smoke. Encre Noir is one of the only fragrances that I have gotten in that was a cheapie. When I sprayed it into the air, I was just taken aback like, my God, that quality for that price is insane. Now it's not going to work for everybody. This is not the type of fragrance that's, you know, going to bat 99% as far as people saying, oh, I love it. But it is something that you need to experience at some point what you can get for that price. And then another vetiver scent, Pierre Hermes from Hermes. You have to have this. So you have the aforementioned vetiver, also citrus in here. Uh, you've got this flint note and it comes across at times earthy, a little bit dirty. Some people say dirty orange and uh, that's not going to appeal to everybody. But for me, it comes across smelling like just almost the pinnacle 
of gentlemanly designer fragrances. The quality is amazing. The scent is fantastic. I've said that a bunch in this video, but it really is. So Terre d'Hermes, you have to have this one. And then another one you have to have that's not really modern anymore, Amen from Terry Mugler. Unfortunately, the Amen line looks like it's kind of out the door. <laughs> you know, it's not really getting love like it used to. It's not getting releases like it used to. And there are some fragrances that came out in that line that are just stunning. Pure Havan, Pure Malt especially, but now they are harder and harder and harder to find and uh, Mugler just hasn't been doing much with it, you know, not much with the line. So this one has a big punch, a lot of power here, projection, longevity, has kind of a rubbery feel at times. Some people I think have compared it to the smell of tar when you first spray it on. <laughs> it's, it's really not that bad though. It's got a good amount of patchouli in here, which gives it kind of a chocolatey uh, smell, very gourmandy. And uh, it's a fragrance that I still like to go back to and smell from time to time and I think that it's one that you should really own and you should smell and, and kind of get used to. And then also from Mugler, just Mugler Cologne, good old green standby soapy fresh fragrance that you can pull off just about anywhere anytime. Nowadays it's called Mugler Come Together but uh, basically you just want to look for the the Mugler that's green. And then from Dunhill, Icon. This is as far as their main line of fragrances go basically the pinnacle of Dunhill at this point. It's a little bit similar to something like Terre d'Hermes from earlier. It's somewhere on this table, I don't know, but a little bit similar to that. Price is really nice. Bottle super heavy, looks classy. Atomizer is, is really good as well. Got a nice freshness to it, white florals in here along with black pepper. And uh, unfortunately, Dunhill just seems to have gone downhill. Uh, that's like a bad dad joke. Dunhill's going downhill but it seems like they have since this came out. Not, not, a lot of, not a lot of great stuff coming out of there lately. On to some Gautier, some Jean-Paul Gautier Ultra Mall. This is one of the best late night compliment pulling sweet fragrances that have come out in the past 10 years. It was heavily, heavily hyped when it first came out, just like hyped to the moon. And it's died down since then, obviously, as tends to happen, but it still is a stunning scent that people love. And then keeping it in the Lamal line, Lamal de Parfum. This is great reinterpretation of the original Iris used once again in this fragrance. And I think it makes Lamal kind of cool again. Ultramol didn't, Lamal de Parfum did. Then from Ferragamo, Womo. From Discounters, this used to be very inexpensive, but prices have been creeping up. This fragrance has uh, a great utilization of tiramisu. So it gives you a sweet coffee scent profile, which makes it more appealing to more people. It doesn't have that roast coffee feel that for some people turns them away. So even though the price on Womo has gone up, I think it's still a must own from the brand. And we also have from Ferragamo, Aqua Essential Colonia. This one is still, last time I checked, pretty affordable from discounters. And this is gonna give you a similar feel to something like an Aqua de Parma. So it's gonna give you this gentlemanly, clean, fresh, brisk take on an Italian cologne at a great budget. Then we have from Mont Blanc, Explorer. Basically, designer Aventus. It's gonna get you very close, at least as far as designer scents go, to a Creed Aventus style fragrance. Versatility uh, through, through the roof, just off the charts, and a uh, good price as well. And then Legend from the same house. You know, same idea here, only with Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. So gonna give you a, a very similar fragrance to Fierce, but at half or less the cost. Then we have from Burberry, London. This is one of my personal favorites from the house, my little baby bottle. And this one is um, a great holiday fragrance. It smells very much of the holidays, the spices. It's got port wine in here, a bit of leather tobacco. It's a very easy to wear fragrance. The performance could be better, but I think that it's a fragrance that you gotta have. It's a, again, one of those personal favorites that I just inserted in here. Got another hype beast, Bentley for men, Intense. This is going to give you an approximation of fragrances like Edol de Lubin and Chambre Noir. So those are both niche fragrances that are much more expensive. This one smells quite similar to those, but at a much lower cost. And it's one of those ultra hyped cheapies because of that, that great quality you get for the price. And then last but not least, Valentino 
Womo. Just the original Womo. Nowadays, it's Born in Roma, Born in Roma Yellow Dream. I think the original still needs a bit of love. This one's gonna give you a chocolatey, hazelnut kind of uh, scent profile along with leather and woods. It is a very, 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 very pleasing fragrance. It's classy, it's sweet, it's compliment pulling. It's about everything you'd want in a designer scent. And it's got enough of its own personality to stand out from the crowd. Man, that took a long time. 50 fragrances. Those are the 50 I think you should own if you want just a killer, killer collection that's gonna have you covered for every situation. Formal, casual, date night, spring, summer, fall, winter, doesn't matter. Something in those 50 will have you covered. Well guys, this video has run long, so I'm gonna jet. Thank you for hanging to the end. If you did, you're like one of the 1% or something. <laughs> so thanks. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.